Um, for more now, I should say, we're joined by Daniel Sherwer. He is uh, live for us from Atlanta. He is a senior fellow with the Center for Transatlantic Relations. We want to thank you for joining us. I know that you've said in the past when it comes to negotiations, timing is everything. What was it about this timing that made everything right? Well, I think the Americans very much needed to halt or get a pause in the Iranian program, and the Iranians are feeling the pain of the sanctions. So on both sides, there was good reason to reach an accord now. And what about your thoughts on the deal itself? How does it change the landscape? It doesn't change the landscape very much. What it does is to provide a six-month period, maybe renewable one more time, to reach a permanent agreement on the Iranian nuclear program. The landscape, though, remains the same. It's a t difficult landscape with the United States, Israel, Europe, wanting to block Iran from getting a nuclear weapon or a nuclear weapons capability of any sort, and Iran wanting to maintain uh, the capability that it's already achieved. U.S. Secretary of State John Kerry has indicated that the hard part actually starts now, that a lot of work is still ahead. And of course, the Obama administration has to handle the Israeli government, which says it's a bad, bad deal. Some top Republicans also against it. How does the administration navigate all of this? Well, it's going to have to navigate carefully. I think the Israelis uh, have overplayed their hand, and the administration will be able to satisfy them on many points. So far as Congress is concerned, I think uh, the Congress passing sanctions that don't initiate uh, until after the six-month period is an option that uh, clearly Menendez would like to, uh, to take up. And I, I think that's actually a good thing to be doing. I don't think that's a bad thing to be doing. I think the administration will eventually have to accept the fact that the Congress will want to pass some sanctions that indicate clearly what happens if a, if a broader and more permanent agreement is not reached. France and some other countries are planning to meet soon to lift some of the sanctions against Iran. What, what might they be? What do you see there? Well, there's some movement to free up some funds that have been, uh, that have been frozen abroad and some, allow some transactions to occur. But, you know, this is pretty small beans. It's a few billion dollars uh, for an Iran that is lacking tens of billions every month. So it's not a, it's not a gigantic positive impact for Iran. And uh, frankly, it's not a gigantic positive impact for us either because it's just a pause in their nuclear program. It's not a, a permanent end to uh, things that are causing concern around the world. President Obama today defended the deal, saying tough talk and bluster may be the easy thing to do politically, but it's not good for our security. I wanted to get your thoughts on that comment. Well, I think he's right. I think uh, tough talk and bluster wouldn't get us any place at this point. The thing to do is to work diligently for a broader and more permanent agreement and be ready to act if we're unable to achieve that broader and more permanent agreement. And you were talking about a broader agreement. You've even suggested recently that there might one day be a U.S. embassy in Tehran. How soon might, might we see something like that? Well, I don't think we're going to see it very soon, but I do think that this a uh, broader agreement will require that we uh, broaden the negotiation away from the elite few negotiators who've been involved so far and begin to involve the, our Congress, the Iranian Majlis, and begin to involve the think tanks and, and universities and other uh, organizations that can improve uh, understanding between the two countries. There is a lot of mistrust that has to be dispelled. At some point in that process, we'll want an embassy in Tehran because you want to understand your uh, friends, you want to understand your enemies as best you can, and you do that through a good American embassy. Daniel Surer, thank you so much for your time. Certainly appreciate it. My pleasure.